Today's Neville Goddard conversation is based on the premise of this particular quote here from his book, Feeling is the Secret. One of my favorite books, because me being a ENTJ, or at least I identify with that most of the time, I recognize that there is a lot of power in understanding and building a relationship with how I feel. Now, I met a lot of interesting people in my life who have taught me different ways of understanding. I want to share a story. So first, let's look at this quote here. He says, the creative process begins with an idea, and its cycle runs its course as a feeling and ends in a volition to act. Ideas are impressed on the subconscious through the medium of feeling. So a number of years ago, I was in Los Angeles and I was on a walk. And I really am fascinated when I have this feeling. There was someone walking beside me and it felt like she was reading me. <laughs> like she was actually observing and reading my energy. That's what it felt like. So I found that to be interesting and I turned over and I started talking with her and we actually became friends and for that weekend we hung out and it turns out that she is actually a professional poker player. She does this full time. She's actually from Las Vegas. And what unraveled over that weekend was some very deep conversation regarding feeling. And because she is a poker player, she has the power to, which I believe we all have the power to, intuitively understand the five sensory experience from the vision. So that conversation went on. It was like a perpetual conversation. Now, I believe that conversation that I had with her or the series of conversations actually ended up being a result of the idea of making flow a priority, which is essentially living from intuition and allowing intuition to stimulate certain ideas. Like, for example, the conversations we had, we were really getting into the nuances of communication. We were going beyond interpretations. We were connecting it to the feeling. Because the feeling of intuition contains infinity degrees of communication. When an artist, a poet, or somebody that really enjoys communicating allows their intuition to guide their expression, they seem to never run out of things to say. They seem to always be able to discuss, elaborate, understand, and the communication is one that when you have it with the other person, it further inspires their own intuition. And so in relation to our conversation, Neville says, what you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. This is the whole law of a full and happy life. Everything else is commentary. Now, if you've been watching my videos for a while, you'll know that this parallels very nicely to one of my favorite quotes from Steve Jobs. And the quote is, follow your heart and intuition. They somehow already know what you want to become. Everything else is secondary. So one of my favorite questions to ask someone, and I ask myself this question often, is what do I really want? Because I know, and I've seen it with others, that when a person really identifies what they want, they really ask that question, what do they really want? They can conjure up in their imagination a scene that would imply its fulfillment. A lot of times, it's automatic. If I say to somebody, what do you want? They think of something. They imagine themselves in the end. And it brings them into that feeling of the wish fulfilled. Sometimes just asking that question, what do you want? In all sincerity, actually helps a person in a way that we might not consciously know. Because I believe it really stimulates 
what they truly desire. And what they truly desire is what they are resonant with, what they identify with, or as we've been discussing from a Neville Goddard conversations, what they say I am too. Because as soon as they call upon anything after awareness, or in this case, awareness of I am, they change and the change has been initiated. They go down the journey to realizing that vision. So you can always call upon anything in your imagination. And I would say you could also call upon what you truly desire in your imagination. And what you'll find is that you'll genuinely want to commit to what you truly desire. And that's what you identify with. That is what you truly want done unto you. And so he says, whatever the mind of man can conceive and feel as true, the subconscious can and must objectify. This is an internal inward relationship. As we discussed in Tuesday's video, we see it as one. But when we're having a conversation, we segment in mind and we find relatability. So for example, she was talking about poker and I love having conversations with poker players because to me, this is very relatable for the entrepreneurial journey. I feel the parallels because what they're really doing is they're guiding themselves from within to deeper levels of understanding. And from there, two things are happening. Number one, ideally they want to maintain the ideal state of mind. So in other words, they want to interpret the five sensory experience from the perspective of in harmony and in contribution to the vision. And so when they're playing poker, what ends up happening is let's say the other players may be appearing to do certain things to break that confidence when someone who really understands how this stuff works understands that all power is within based on what we identify with. When a person continues to, and you get better at it with practice, continue to maintain that state of mind while they're playing poker, what they will notice is they'll be able to see the opportunities and they will be able to read and assess their environment and they'll be able to understand it accurately because they will translate it from the vision, maintaining that ideal state of mind. Same is to be said when it comes to business and entrepreneurship. We're looking to do deals with clients, vendors, bring on team members. And what we want to do is maintain the ideal state of mind of in harmony and in contribution to the vision. So the vision is I create products and services that are needed and useful that benefits the lives of others and others show up ready to receive those products and services. That's the internal assumption, which has become a belief, which then plays out as theater as the entrepreneurial success. The entrepreneurs that I speak with resonate with that particular idea that they really do have innovation in them that others show up to receive the benefits, which translate over to the results. Now, the feeling starts when we imagine we are taught to leave this world alone and go into our imagination and assume ourselves to be the person that already has the results. And so to further encourage this, he says here, sensation precedes manifestation and is the foundation which upon all manifestation rests. Be careful of your moods and feelings, for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. So her and I had this conversation and essentially it was all about, in a nutshell, maintaining a degree of presence and awareness to the point where we can consciously associate interpretations in relation to the different aspects of the game. And I was fascinated with that because I said, well, that's the same thing when it comes to leadership. 
That's the same thing when it comes to sales. That's the same thing when it comes to dealing with others in business. We want to remember and continue to associate with the feeling. Now, if you're a poker player, we recognize that this is something that may be experienced as challenging, but that's okay. Over here, we see challenge as opportunity. Challenge is an opportunity to transmute that energy of reactivity over to proactivity. What can be done about it? And so, remember this, we go back to the beginning. The cause is within. We initiate the change based on what we say I am too. We commit to the end and assume it as done. Her goal was to maintain that state of mind and not see it from a stress-based perspective, but rather see it from the perspective of the conscious use of the two gifts of speech and mind. I say this all throughout our videos, and it was articulated really well in the Hermetica. We were given two gifts, speech and mind. And then in earlier stages of our journey, we learn associations, what we say I am to, the speech, the identification to. So we could say what we say I am to, what we hold to be true, how we perceive reality to be, our paradigm in regards to, what we identify with, etc., etc., etc. Many different ways of associating I am, awareness I am in relation to. Many different ways of associating I am, recognizing that we weave the outer aspects of life by what we associate I am to. Like an artist would express a creative expression or an entrepreneur and innovation. And so we got into a lot of conversations regarding nuances because a lot of power, if you're a poker player, a lot of power is found in the nuance. So you become very excited about discovering nuances, different body language, interpretations really from within. And then to transcend a level higher to that, how do we relate or react to what is being presented? Do we see it from the perspective of this is going to help me win? This is going to help me further cultivate my skill? This is going to be important information to reflect upon so that I could become more refined in my ability to translate the intuition of understanding into distinct strategies or techniques in the game. So I want to tie this into some important points here. I believe that wherever you go, you find teachers. And you'll be able to identify these teachers based on how you feel. You feel resonant. And so you have a conversation with them. You feel resonant in the conversation. You feel that it is that relationship that I spoke of to a very deep degree in the video I released a few weeks ago regarding learning and teaching, in which the student sees themselves as the teacher and the student, and the teacher sees themselves as the student and the teacher. Because as we continue to identify with, and this has been my experience, we have a deeper degree of tuning into our intuition to really help us discern. And since feeling is the secret, this will allow us to successfully implement what he shared here. Be careful of your moods and feelings, for there is an unbroken connection between your feelings and your visible world. Rather than running away from understanding the feeling, which creates unnecessary complexity and even unnecessary argumentation in the mind. Seemingly conflicting thoughts and seeming confusion in the mind, we are able to make peace with the mind because we know we are guided from within via our intuition. The moment you commit to your vision, assume it is done, and the journey is unraveled by that feeling. So mind, the two gifts of speech and mind. We want to be conscious with the two gifts of speech and mind rather than being overwhelmed by overthinking as a result of friction of, let's say, reactive use of the two gifts of speech and mind. Now, like with anything, you get better at it with practice. And one of the best ways to practice this is to make flow a priority. 
Because what we find in deep stages of flow is all of the stuff that we're talking about here. When we get into that deep stage of flow, which we call autotelic, everything here is automatic. We assume it is done and everything else is automatic. We end up understanding, I mean really understanding. It's one thing to theorize about things conceptually. We want this information to represent who we really are, which is how I believe we're truly designed to live. And then we understand to a very deep degree what he says here. Think feelingly only of the state you desire to realize. So it can seem on the surface contradictory. Think feelingly. Maybe a person thought it was separate, but he seemed to have fused this together nicely. Think feelingly. And I also want to emphasize that we actually already do this. Think about a time in your life or imagine a time in your life or remember a time in your life where you felt autotelic and you were really listening to and honoring that intuition guiding you from within. And you notice that your creativity was expressing automatically, full expression, allowing the expression. Did you notice that there were moments where you could pause and really express what you're feeling, put it into words and express it, share it with another person. And you said it in a very interesting way. You may even have said to yourself, I wish I had recorded it because I would have loved to have maybe written it down or put it into a video and share it with others or remind myself. That's the words being expressed from the feeling. So we understand deeper now. Let's look at the quote. Think feelingly only of the state you desire to realize. It's to really honor and imagine what you truly desire. I mean, we want to release ourselves from certain thinking patterns regarding shame or that you can't have what you want, that you don't deserve what you want, and these kinds of thinking patterns. And one of the conversations that we had that I remember was essentially the idea that you might as well think in a way that's going to facilitate the results. And she had a very distinct perspective on how she looked at reality. And I felt that she was comfortable to share it with me because I didn't judge it. I just wanted to understand it. And there's something very powerful that we feel when people really want to understand us. And not try to change our perspective, but really understand us. There's a lot of power in that. Because I believe that people intuitively truly know what they want. One of the things that I mentioned to her that I had further encouraged within myself is an idea. That people truly admire those who are confident in the fact that they think differently. So it's okay to think differently. It's okay to imagine differently. And when we allow ourselves to think or imagine differently... We allow ourselves to think and imagine what we truly desire. And when we think and imagine what we truly desire, then we live how we truly want to live. And it's easy to get into that feeling and maintain it. And so he says, think freely only on the state you desire to realize. So we want to allow ourselves to think freely and more specifically put, Identify, say I am too, identify with that which we allow ourselves to freely think, which then brings us into that feeling of the wish fulfill as we maintain that on the journey to realizing the vision. And so he says, feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that conviction is the way of seeming miracles. Now, this is also very interesting because we discussed this to a certain degree on Tuesday's video in which we mentioned that within the subconscious are inherent, infinite powers of how to do things. And we don't have to know those powers. We simply call upon them by what we identify with, what we say I am too. And as always, you'll find you'll identify with what you truly desire easily. 
So allow yourself to be how you really want to be. And if necessary, it's worth listening to this particular audio again and again and again because I set it up in a way to encourage that intuition because it takes you on very interesting journeys. If you're like me and you like to meet people who have different perspectives on reality, who live very interesting lives and learn from them, then recognize that they are living in and from their intuition. And as you live in and from your intuition, you apply here what he says. What you do not want done unto you, do not feel that it is done unto you or another. Or we can flip it around and say, I live from intuition. I dwell in and from intuition. And as a result, I bring forth others who also do the same. So I trust you found this video to be helpful. Let's go ahead and conclude this with an auto-suggestion. We can say, I recognize that a change of feeling is a change of destiny. As a result, I'm able to ask the question, what is it that I truly want, and allow myself to think feelingly only of the state I desire to realize. I recognize that sensation precedes manifestation and is the foundation upon which all manifestation rests. Through this process, I become autotelic, knowing that feeling the reality of the state sought and living and acting on that conviction is the way of all seeming miracles. If you would like a copy of this mind map, the link is in the description. Thank you very much for watching. I'll talk to you soon. Take care.